Saturday night, January 9th, my wife and I had dinner in Chicago and then attended a concert by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. We had a room at the JW Marriott, five blocks from Symphony Center. We heard a delightful overture by Brahms and then one of our favorite pieces by Haydn, a cello concerto. We made the short walk back to the hotel and got to our room just as the second half of the Pittsburgh Steelers Cincinnati Bengal game was beginning. I had heard earlier in the week that there might be some bad karma flowing during that game, such that the league decided to have John Perry and his crew, Mark Pellis, Dana McKenzie, Ron Marinucci, Buddy Horton, Scott Novak, and Perry Paganelli stand at the 50-yard line during warm-ups to enforce the no-fly zone. I got comfortable and figured I'd watch a few minutes before hitting the sack. Within those first few minutes, things started happening that riveted. It seemed as if every play had management challenges. I had not seen such wrangling in recent memory. Play after play, the Steelers and the Bengals jawed, jarred, and jousted. The Bengals were especially gnarly. Play after play, John and the entire crew seemed in the middle or circling the edges of scrums and skirmishes. The trash talk and taunts made the pushing and shoving a toxic cocktail. I became immersed in what the crew was doing and attempting to do. Under my breath, I find myself uttering, wow, time and time again. What became clear over the next two quarters was this. John Perry and his men knew their jobs and executed them without fear or favor. Lesser men would have folded. Those guys did not. They stepped forward. They used calm demeanor to talk outrageously acting players to a somewhat calmer place. Then, within seconds, Another flare-up needed hosing. Into that fray they went. John moved quietly among the flaring embers. His eyes told you something. They told you that nothing was going to happen in this game, his game, that would be beyond what he could handle. Helmets hit and flags flew. Separating players became an incessant need and through it all, John seemed an icon of calm control. He just kept going about his business in a manner that made you feel mighty proud. Proud, that is, if you are of an officiating persuasion. The performance, enforcement, and execution by that crew saved that game from a fate much worse than it ultimately suffered, to wit, the Bengals taking themselves out of the playoffs solely because of their boorish and dangerous behavior. They acted the malevolent ruffians and such as not to be tolerated, and it wasn't. It is interesting to note that the following morning I received a plethora of texts from my usual suspects who are fans first and my friends second. Those guys normally text me with complaints on the officiating in general or select calls in specific. This time though, they texted to say that the Bengals game really brought them an aha moment. They understood, after watching what unfolded, that those human beings in stripes were essential to the game. It was no longer just about seeing a play in HD and rerunning it. They came to a place of acceptance about the human element in the games we play. In some measure, I regret that the players forced John and the guys into firefighter mode, but firefight they did and with unique skills. That night, in front of millions, they shined a beacon of light on why it is we do what we do and why what we do is warranted. A tip of the hat to those guys, John's late father Dave, who was himself an NFL official and a hugely successful men's college basketball official, would have been proud. Thank you.